Welcome back to So You Really Want to Learn Latin and today we have a guest star, my niece Izzy. She is here, flown in all the way from the other side of the country to do a special lesson on linking clauses. Now she's a bit nervous because she hadn't done Latin for a bit and she's probably forgotten everything she ever knew. But luckily that doesn't matter because she is in great hands with uh, the So You Really Want to Learn Latin course, which uh, I'm sure she really does. <laughs> and today we are going to see uh, if any of this works and whether she, by the end of this lesson, knows more Latin than she did at the beginning. If we achieve that, we've cracked it, haven't we? Yeah, we have. Absolutely. Right. Okay, now we're going to start off with four little joining words. Okay? Now, the first three of them all behave in a very, very similar way. Okay? So, autem. Now, autem doesn't really mean very much at all. You might wonder why we're even talking about it. If you were to look it up in a vocabulary, it would say, however or moreover. But the point about autem is it doesn't really need to be translated at all. It's just there to help join two clauses together. Okay? okay. And autem is always written as the second word in a clause, never first. Okay? Okay. So, for example, you might have a simple little sentence such as Romani opugna werunt, okay, the Romans have attacked, dux autem hostium, copias ad flumen duxit. Now, that means the leader, and then you've got this word moreover or however, and if you want, because you want to translate every word, you might translate it as uh, however, the leader of the enemy led his forces to the river. But the point about autem is it doesn't mean however, it, uh, and it doesn't even really mean moreover, because moreover doesn't mean a huge mm. amount. It just joins those two clauses together. The first clause, Romani opugna werunt, the Romans attacked. And then logically there's a connection with Dux autem hostium, copias had flumen duxit. So you're joining the two together. So it's never the first word in the sentence? Never the first word. You notice it was dux autem hostium, not autem dux. You would never see autem dux. Okay? Interesting. So the first one we're kicking off with this morning is a word we probably will never translate. But it would be wrong for it not to be there because Latin clauses like to be joined together. Mm -hmm. Okay, To avoid a thing which we might talk about later called a syndeton, but we'll deal with the syndeton okay. later. Okay, now the second word we're going to look at is tamen. Now, tamen is also only ever used as the second word in a sentence. And this one does mean however. It really does mean however. Autem, we said, means however or moreover, but really it doesn't mean anything at all. Tamen, however, means however. Okay. So, for example, you might have Romani opugna werunt. There's our thing again. Hostes tamen milites miseros supera werunt. Okay, so there's the Romans attacked, and then you see the word tamen, you see it as the second word in the clause, because you know it always comes second word, and this one is really going to mean however. So, however, the enemy overcame the wretched soldiers. Okay, so we'll do some actual revision on translating these, Izzy's going to do them in a minute. <laughs> But I just want to get the basic points down that uh, these four words we're talking about. So, tamen, second word in the clause, and it means however. Okay? Third one we're going to do is enim. Now, enim also is only found second word in the clause. You never put it at the beginning. And it means 
full in the sense of this is the reason. It, it sort of explains what has come before. So here we've got Romani are pulled in our warrant, okay, the Romans attacked. Hostes enim capere copiebant. So enim, it means for, so that is for they wanted to capture the enemy. It's like because. Exactly. It means for in the sense of because. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, not for in the sense of on behalf of or that kind of for. Okay. And finally for now, um, actually not finally for now because there are a few more. Uh, next one we're going to do is um, que. Now, que, the letters Q-U-E, are sometimes added on to the end of a word. And can you remember what they mean? And. Cool. So instead of using et in front of a word, you can put que on the end of the word and it will mean and. So for example, put a re, put a li que, curebant. Okay, so what would that mean? The boys and the girls ran, yeah. were running. Exactly. The boys and the girls. Pu'eri, pu'elai que. So the que means and, and you sort of pick it up and put it in front of the word that it was joined onto and translate it as and. So pu'eri, pu'elai que is the boys and the girls. Is there a reason why you'd use it instead of et? No reason at all. Um... It's just a, an alternative. It's much less common than it, mm. but it's quite stylish. Once you've learnt that que means and, you can sort of make your sentences a little bit more interesting by using que instead of it. Mm. Now, it can be used to join nouns together. It can also be used to join clauses together. So, for example, you might have a little sentence such as agricolae cantabant, Main sasque parabant. Okay. Okay, so have a crack at that. The farmers were singing. Yeah. And preparing the tables. Pre uh, and preparing the. Was that a table? No, yeah, but how many? Main sauce? One. Ooh. Main sauce? Plural. The nice. The tables. Good. So the farmers were singing and were preparing the tables. Mm hmm. Okay, so there are also some negative versions which we will just look at while we're at this. Um, first of all, we've got the word neque, which is sometimes written as neque and sometimes written as neck. And both of those words mean and not. Okay, it's really bad form, so bad that you must never do it mm -hmm. to put et known. Together. Yeah. Your your and not is not et known. Et non, okay. It's neque okay. or neck. So for example, you might have dormit neque laborat. Okay, so dormit, he is sleeping or she is sleeping. Neque laborat. Oh sorry, neque laborat is a long way. So what would that working? mean? Yeah. So do it again. So he is sleeping and not working. Very good. So you notice, mm. and not working was neque, it was not et, et non. Okay. okay. Similarly, you, you, the Latin for and not is neque. The Latin for but not is not said followed by known. It's neck followed by tamen. Kind of like not, however. Exactly. Mm. So, pugnabat, nectamen superabat, would mean? He was fighting, not, however, but he was not uh, winning. Yeah, overcoming yeah. winning. Yeah, very good. So, pugnabat, he or she was fighting, nectamen, but he was not... Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then just to finish off these little kind of funny little things, if you see neck 
dot 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 neck. In other words, you've got a sentence where mm. neck appears twice. That's the Latin for neither no. nor. So you might have neck nauti, neck agricolae, regem amavant. Okay. And that would be neither the sailors nor the farmers. Yeah. Loved the king. Very good indeed. Okay. Were so loving. Yeah. So neck neck neither nor, and uh, similar to that is et followed by et is both and. So et nauti, et agricolae, regem amabant would be... Both the sailors and the farmers were loving the king. Very good indeed. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's quite a few little kind of joining words and it allows us now to open up a whole range of uh, translating where our passages become much more complex and you don't fall into the terrible traps of saying things are et known which you know my teacher would have chased me around the room with a broom handle if I'd you know, <laughs> done that. Okay so we're gonna throw Izzy to the lions now we're in chapter 9 of the book and this is slightly adapted from what we've got uh, on page 83 um, just a little bit uh, so we're going to throw her in and see how she goes. Now, Izzy <laughs> hasn't had one of my lessons on the golden rules of translating, so we'll, it'll be very interesting to see whether she follows those rules instinctively. I'm sure she will, because she's a brainy girl, and what can possibly go wrong? If, however, <laughs> we see her making a hash of it, almost certainly it will be because she's not followed the golden rule, then I'll have to remind her what they are. Let's see if I do it. Let's see. Okay, so here we are. We're going to have this little passage. Quinque puellae et quattro puri per vias ambulavant. Okay. Okay. So, the verb, they were walking. Very nice. You see that instinctively, without me even saying it, she went straight <laughs> to the verb. Look at the verb first, it always works. So, ambulavant, they were walking. Okay. And the question, of course, is what? The subject? What's yes. the subject? Who was walking? Who? Exactly. Okay, so it's five girls and four boys. Very nice. Were so, walking yeah. down the road. Okay, now that was a bit sloppy. She just kind of went down the road because oh, yeah. she was thinking life's too short to do it properly. Per we us. It's per plus accusative? Yeah. But is that accusative singular or accusative plural? We ask. Oh, plural. Ah. Um, through, isn't it technically through? Yeah. Through the roads. Yeah. Um, okay. So, pair means through, uh, or along actually, but, so through the, and we are... The streets? Or yeah, okay. through the streets. Okay, so... so five girls and four boys were walking through the streets. Very nice. Pontem autem widerunt. However... Verb, yeah. plural, they, yeah. they saw, yeah. a bridge. Very good. Now, tell me again how you're going to translate that word out in. Ha however, or moreover. Or, best of all. But, you just leave it. Leave it out altogether. It, in English, it wouldn't make any real sense to have a sentence that went, five girls and four boys were walking through the streets, however they saw a bridge. But if it was tamen, ah, if it then was, it would be however. Because then okay. that would suggest it was really weird that they saw a bridge. Whoa, we saw a bridge. So what's coming next? Okay. Okay. So just, just to be clear, it's bad Latin not to link clauses together. And the weakest join of all is outem. So in Latin, it must be there. In English, it almost always doesn't get translated at all because okay. it's just, it's almost like an intake of breath. Okay? Right, on we go. Put a lie aquam non temebant et proper flumen ludevant. Okay. So the verbs non temebant. Mm -hmm. And Ludevan. Okay. So they were not scared. Yeah. The subject Puelai again. Yeah. The girls 
We're not scared of the water. Okay. So Timeo means I fear or I am scared of. So that's okay. that's why aquam is in the accusative. In English, it sounds as if you you need a genitive after yeah. they were afraid of. But, but it's part of the verb. Exactly. Okay, so the girls were not scared of the water. Yeah. Et and. Yeah. Um, so prope flu men, that's prope plus accusative. Very good indeed. Um, and they played. Yes, very good. They played, it's like through the river or something. No, not through it. Prope. With? No, near. Near. Oh, okay, and they played near the river. Okay. Flower tamen in aquam kekidit. However. Aha. Uh -huh. Tamen. However, Flavia, yeah. subject, yeah. Um, she fell. Very good. In plus accusative, in the water. Uh, in plus accusative means? Into, into the, water. the water. Okay, okay. very good. And kekidit comes from which Latin word? Kedo? No. Oh. You instinctively... Kekido. No. Kado. Brilliant. Coming back. So in a previous <laughs> lesson, we, we did a thing about the perfect tense of third conjugation verbs. They kind of aren't guessable. Kekidit, you have no idea what verb that comes from. Mm. Unless, unless you know it. Unless you know it. Unless you've learnt kado, kadari, kekidi, kasum, I fall. Okay, brilliant. Well done. Right, on with the exciting story. Pue. Marcus nomine ad flumen festinavit. So the subject is puer, so the boy, mm -hmm. and this is um, separated by commas, so by the name of Marcus. Good. Nomine Marcus, by name Marcus, and that's, you know, we would in English probably say called Marcus, but that's very good. Festinavit, singular. Yeah. Um, he hurried. Yeah. To the river. So the subject, Pierre, yeah. the boy, mm -hmm. then separated by commas, Marcus nomine. So yeah. Nomine. Nomine. It's a long O. Nomine. Good. By the name of Marcus, yeah. called Marcus. Very good. Festin Festinavit. 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 It's a long I. Um, Again, it is a little thing on. Unless the book has marked the vowel, with that long sign over the top, oh. that long thing is called a macron. Unless you see it with the macron, and therefore you know to pronounce it as festinavit, the only way to get the pronunciation of that word right is when you learn it, to learn it's festino. And, festino. you know, again, uh, correct Latin pronunciation, mine is not brilliant, as I'm sure you all now know, but... It is important to know that it's festino. Later on in the course, when we get on to uh, Latin poetry, it's critical where the vowels are long or short. Okay. So just, you know, if I pick you up on saying festino, it's because later you need to know it's festino. Festino. Okay. So festino of it. Mm -hmm. um, he hurried. Yeah. Add plus accusative Very toward good. the river. Very good. So the boy, by the name of Marcus, hurried towards the river. Very good. Uh, flowem enim servare cupievat. Okay. So enim. Yeah. However. No. Oh, therefore. No. For. Good. It's, it, <laughs> oh, because. It, yeah, yeah. For because, okay. It means for in the sense of because. Um, he wanted. Yeah. And then that's plus um, to do something. Yeah. What's that called again? The present infinitive. Infinitive, yeah. Yeah. Because he want, um, because he wanted. Yeah. To help. Or to a bit more to than look help. To look after. To save. To save. Servo to save. Flavia. Yeah. So that would end him. It's explaining the previous sentence. Okay, so the boy called Marcus hurried to the river for he wanted to save Flavia. It's 
kind of because he wanted to. That that's why he hurried. Mm. Okay. Okay. Puri put alaika aquam spectabant. So the verb they yeah. they were watching. Yeah. So it's the girls and the boys. Yes. So puri. Okay. So the girls and the boys. Well, strictly speaking, because of the way we've written it. The girls and boys. The boys and the girls. The boys girl. and the girls. Otherwise you'll confuse everyone by right. <laughs> <laughs> so the boys and the girls. <laughs> We're watching the water. Good. Flowiam tamen noon with Avant. However, they they did not see yeah. Flavia. Yeah. So a bit of a nightmare this. Flavia's gone you know, pear shaped into the water. And they are looking... But they can't see her. They can't see her. What's going to happen? Okay. So what happens next? <laughs> Tandem Marcus in aquam descendit. Now, everyone has a habit of muddling tandem and tamen. They look very similar. They've got totally different meanings. Mm. Now, tamen, we've already learnt today, means... However... Good. Tandem means at last. Mm -hmm. In old-fashioned speech, it meant at length. And we used to remember that because a tandem is a very long oh, word school. Okay. okay, so what happens next? Tandem, Marcus in aquam descendit, nectamen, flaviam weedit. Okay. So, at last, Yeah. Marcus, the subject, Yeah. He went down yeah. to send it in plus accusative into the water. Very good. And now we're going into a new mm. clause. Nectamen. Okay. Now, do you remember what nectamen means? Neither nor. No, not no. however. Well, strictly speaking, it means and not however. Yeah, okay, so... But that's the way in Latin we say... But, but not. not. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. But... So the verb is he sees. Yeah. He saw. Yeah, good. But he didn't see. Yeah. Flavia. Very good. So tandem marcus mm. in aquam descendit, nectam in flaviam weedit... At last, Marcus went down into the water, but he did not see Flavia. Okay, so be careful with that neck tamen. To, to say but not in Latin, you must use neck tamen and do not ever use said known or you'll get chased around there. The thing that's confusing there is then the verb comes in the middle of the neck tamen when you translate it. Yeah, but he did not. Exactly know. right. So that yeah, you've got to split the neck tamen, put kind of but at the front of it, then go off and grab the verb, stick a knot in yeah, it, it's it's spooky. Tandem put alam in wain it serawa witque. How oh at last he found oh so the sub um the object's the same of both the verbs. Yeah. So it's like he found good. and he helped. Yeah. Very the good. Girl. Yeah. So at last, do it again. So at last, yeah. he found and he helped the girl. Yeah. Or the way we would probably do that is to say at last he found the girl and, and helped her. Well, more than helped, self, saved her. And saved her. Right. To make clear that it's the same object. Exactly, okay. exactly right. So you, you're right. I mean, it could have been, at last, he found and saved the girl. Um, but probably you would say, at last, he found the girl and he saved her. Now, the word her isn't there in the Latin, but, but pop logic it pops it in for you. Okay. Put elam enim amabat. Because? Well, it, in the sense of because, but we initially let's translate and in the way we learn it. For. For. He loved her. He loved the girl. Yeah. And you're right, he, it would be absolutely fine, in fact, probably better to translate it as because. 
So enim means for in the sense of because. For he loved the girl. So instead of pu alam there, could there also be like her? Yeah, but we haven't learnt pronouns yet. Or it could say flower. Or it could say flower yam. It could have said flower yam enim a while back, for he loved Flavia, because that's who the girl yeah. is. And uh, when we get on to pronouns, we'll learn how to say for he loved her. Mm -hmm. But that's a word we haven't yet learned. It's a okay. demonstrative pronoun, as I'm sure you remember. So, a dazzling performance by Izzy there, absolutely straight out of the top drawer. Everything we now need to know about joining clauses together, uh, joining little phrases together, joining nouns together using que or and. We've got our both and, et et. We've got a. Neither our, nor. Neither nor, neck neck. I mean, we've got a whole load of things in our armoury now. Uh, so, dazzling stuff. Next time, we're going to move on and look at the verb to be. That's sum. But until then, keep up the good work. I'm sure it's going incredibly well. Thank you to Izzy, and see you later on this channel. Bye. Bye. <laughs>